Hi and welcome to Mock Cat. Now with about 150 days left for Cat 23, there's this one question on everybody's minds. Is this time enough? So let's learn a little bit more about the Cat syllabus and the prep schedule that will help you to crack it in 5 months and get a good score and hopefully get into an IM or another top B school. So when it comes to Cat, it's an online exam which is typically held on the last Sunday of November. This year it's expected to be held on 26th of November. One thing which differentiates CAD from many other entrance tests is that it's extremely logical. You have DILR of course, but along with that, even the verbal and the quant would be more conceptual and logical driven. There are no vocabulary and grammar questions for instance, or you don't have calculation intensive questions. In fact, you'll be getting a calculator. So reasoning is extremely important. Now the great news is, if you end up getting a good score in CAT or the other national level exams such as ZAT, IFT, SNAP or NMAT, you will basically have access to around 20,000 seats in the top 50 colleges. These are colleges where you typically have 100% placements as well as over 100% bank loans for your fees and your expenses and the expected starting salary would be somewhere in the 12 lakhs to 35 lakhs range depending on which college you are securing admission into. So how do we get a good score in CAT and get into these colleges? So let's understand a little bit more about this exam. Now since COVID, CAT has become a two hour exam. It's held on the same day in three slots. You'll have three different sections, VARC, DILR and quantitative aptitude in this order. Each of these sections will be 40 minutes each. You can't shift in between sections. So let's say if you're done with VARC in 35 minutes, you can't say that I immediately want to get to DILR. So you'll have to stick to these 40 minutes. The CAT exam is expected to be a two hour paper this year as well. Now most of the questions are multiple choice questions. You'll have four options. If you get it right, you get three marks. If you get it wrong, there's negative marking and you'll get minus one. Some of the questions are what's called short answer or type in the answer questions. Now you don't need to write long sentences or essays out here. These will typically be numbers which you punch in. In these cases, if you get it right, you still get three marks. But if you get it wrong, you actually don't get negative. It will be zero. We have 66 questions in CAT. So the total marks that you can get is 198. But realistically, 99 percentile is typically somewhere around 50 percent marks. Somewhere between 90 to 100 marks gets you a very good chance of scoring the 99 percentile. And for most people, 99 percentile is what gets you calls from IIMs and other top B schools. There are some variances, of course, depending on your category, your academics, work experience, diversity factor. But your CAT score has the highest weightage for most institutes. Now coming to the format, here I'm showing you the CAT 22 format and we can expect something similar this year. So your first section will be VARC and that's expected to have 24 questions. This would be split in a 2 to 1 ratio with 16 reading comprehension questions, probably 4 RCs with 4 questions each and another 8 non-RC questions. The next which is DILR has had 4 cases and these are expected to be having five questions each. So if you're solving one case, you should be able to solve all the five questions. Quant will have singlet questions. The current format is 22 questions. So here you can look to maximize the number of questions that you solve. So let's look at the VARC section first. Now in VARC, the most important is of course the RC questions because two thirds of the VARC section and almost one fourth of the entire CAT paper will be RCs. These RCs tend to be a little different from what we've had in school. These will be from overseas sources and the genres or topics that you can expect can be science, socioculture, psychology, economics, philosophy, literature and so on. So it's important to read from overseas sources, read at CAT level and read from all these genres so that you're comfortable. Along with that, you'll have three summary questions where you have a paragraph, four summary options and you need to choose which one is capturing the essence of the paragraph. You can also expect three jumbled paragraph questions where four sentences are jumbled up and you need to find the right sequence. On the verbal side, this is the theta or the short answer question where you punch in the sequence and your marking scheme is a plus three and zero. All the other question types, RC, summary and the newly introduced sentence insertion will be MCQ type with a marking scheme of plus three and minus one. Now sentence insertion, we can expect to get two questions in CAT 2023 as well. This is something which was introduced in CAT 22. So how do we prepare for it? 
Now I am giving you a month by month schedule as well as something which you should do on an ongoing basis. So from now till CAT, definitely try to read one to two articles every day. I'll put the link to our free Telegram channel in the description. You can also get it from mockcat.com. We'll typically have sources from all the genres that the CAT examiners use. It will be at a CAT level of difficulty. So this would be a good thing for you to practice and acclimatize yourself to the different genres and the different RC types which can come up. Make sure to look up any unknown word or concept so that you're revising your vocabulary as well. Now along with this, try to solve one to two RCs on a daily basis and this is something for which you can look at the past papers or you can also sign into mockcat.com and use our free daily quizzes. So the first thing when it comes to your month on month plan, start with RCs. Practice RCs, if possible go for guided prep or at least learn the techniques so that you can get to an average accuracy of 3 out of 4 somewhere in a 10 to 15 minutes time space. It's perfectly fine if you're taking 15-16 minutes, it will still be sufficient for you to solve 3 RCs in the exam. So focus much more on your accuracy rather than the time taken. Once the accuracy is on point, you can look to speed up. There's a lot of techniques which we have at mockcat.com which can help you with this. So if you want to, just sign up for it and start off. Once the RCs are done, the next thing is to focus on the non-RCs. Summaries, jumbled paragraphs, sentence insertion. I'd also recommend that you look at the odd ones out which were there till CAT 2021 just in case. Now here, you need to know the techniques, you need to put in enough practice and you should also analyze your performance. You're not looking to finish the paper. Remember that 99th percentile is somewhere around 50% marks. So when you have a time limit and you're able to solve only maybe 3 or 4 non-RC questions, ideally you should look at what's easiest in that specific paper and what is it that you are better at. So look at your accuracy and your time taken for summaries, for jumbled paragraphs and for sentence insertion. and understand what you are good at so that you can prioritize that. Now once the topics themselves are done, October and November is when you should ramp up the number of mocks and sections. You'll be taking mocks even now, but this is when you can look to take weekly mocks and sectionals, make sure to analyze your performance and try and get your score as good as possible. I'll also be giving you a mock schedule once we cover all the three sections. Now coming to DILR. DILR is split into data interpretation and logical reasoning. So you have all the topics out here. Remember that you will probably get about one case from DI and three cases from LR. That's because CAT has moved away from the traditional tables, charts and calculation intensive problems. You will definitely get at least one DI case but the focus will be more on logical reasoning, numerical reasoning and so on. So how do we go about it? Now on an ongoing basis, I would definitely recommend that you look to solve one to two cases every day. You can use past cases, the mock at daily questions, this, this is something which you'll get for free on our site. From a prep perspective, start with numerical reasoning and data and interpretative tables. Numerical reasoning particularly is what I would say the most important for the DILR section. Once you're done with this in July, in August look to finish DI as well as Venn diagrams. These are relatively easier and you should be able to finish it quickly. And then in September, you can focus on the remaining topics, teams and events, ranking and matching, selections and so on. And along with taking mocks or solving past cases, now once you're done with this, Increase the number of mocks that you're taking over the last two to three months and make sure to analyze your performance. You'll probably be able to solve somewhere around one to three cases in DILR. And especially if you're solving one or two cases, it's extremely important to make sure that you've gone for the easier cases, you have the discipline to leave the cases if you're stuck with them after 10, 12 minutes, right? And you're not making any silly mistakes or calculation errors. So practice, especially in DILR, is really important. The quant section is where students with less time have the biggest concern because the syllabus is the maximum out here. But the good thing is the syllabus is nothing but now high school math, arithmetic, algebra, geometry, numbers and modern maths. Now of these, the most important would be arithmetic. We can expect somewhere around 8 to 10 questions out of 22 questions to be from arithmetic. Algebra can be anywhere from 4 to 8 questions. Geometry again probably around 3 to 5 questions. So these are your 3 most important topics. So I would say in July, start with arithmetic, there's about 8 or 9 topics, so you need to finish these and then you can get to algebra. Along with algebra, try to finish numbers as well in August, it's an easier topic, so you should be able to finish both if you push yourself. And then in September, look to complete geometry and modern maths. In parallel, 
make sure that you're practicing mental arithmetic solve a lot of questions that will help you to ensure that you have understood and you remember the concepts you're able to apply them and it will improve your solving speed needless to say in quant the faster you solve the more number of questions you solve the higher your score is going to be so practicing this practicing a lot of mental maths remembering tables squares and higher powers are somewhat boring things but they really help you to boost your score in quant and maximize the number of questions that you can solve accurately i have a similar recommendation for mocks and sectionals last two months is where you should be ramping this up and analyze your performance if there are any topics where your speed of solving is a little slow or you don't remember the concepts that is what you should revise at this time you should also make sure that your test taking strategy is on point and you're definitely getting to the end of the paper and trying to solve the easier and the faster questions now if you want to revise your concepts at mockcat the concept revision videos are made free this is not enough if you are starting now from scratch but if you've done the prep and you just want to quickly revise the concepts this is a very useful tool so i'll put the link in the description box for you now coming to mocks july and august is where you focus more on your concepts and you taking a smaller number of mocks or sectionals maybe somewhere around 2 to 3 you could look to take one every weekend and make sure that you're analyzing it have a lower target because this is where you are preparing so if you expect to get somewhere around 60 70 80 90 marks now that will probably not happen and that will end up demotivating you so in fact i would recommend any mocks that you are taking in july don't even have a target just use it to get the feel of the cat exam if you're a first time taker and try to make sure that your accuracy is as high as possible don't have a question target or a score target try to get your accuracy as high as possible you never get to 100% accuracy in barc but you can definitely get to about 80% and you can get to 100% accuracy in quant and dilr now september october and november is where you increase the number of mocks and sectionals so try to take a mock every week and maybe over the weekend make sure you are analyzing your tests right solve all the unattempted questions you might find that you know you've not attempted an rc or a dilr case which actually took you less time than the one you opted for during the exam or you might be able to find out what are your common sources of errors and you improve it over the next few tests throughout the week look to take sectional tests now you can take sectional tests in those areas particularly where you feel you need to speed up or where you feel you are making strategic errors somewhat like the ones which i mentioned along with this take as many practice questions whether it is the daily quizzes from mockcat or practice questions from a learn tab if you have opted for that or any other source that you have if you put in this and you make sure that you know you are analyzing your mock performance very seriously then you'll definitely see that your scores keep increasing with each mock so this is the 5 month plan that you can go for if you take anything from this video remember that 99 percentile is somewhere around 50 percent marks or a little lower now this is a good thing because you're not stressing yourself to get 180 190 marks right but at the same time it also means that 99 percent people are not getting 50 percent marks and this is not just because of the time limit this is because a lot of people don't prepare in the right way maybe they don't go through concepts maybe they don't practice enough questions maybe they don't uh, take mocks and analyze their performance i have seen a lot of students where they would have taken a lot of mocks but they would not really have analyzed the performance so this all of these three right starting with your concepts and your practice that is what is going to help you to have a good foundation for concepts try to have video lessons and live classes if possible if you are can't opt for live classes video lessons are definitely important they'll be much better than just having text or questions to solve so get the concepts right practice the daily reading for verbal and then practice a lot of questions in all the three sections along with that make sure to take your mocks and analyze them that is what is going to boost your score up if you don't have much time taking two mocks for 2 hours each and analyzing them for another 2 to 3 hours is better than taking 4 to 5 mocks where you are not analyzing and understanding your errors So follow this to get a great score in CAT 2023 and get into an IIM or other top B schools. All the best to you from all of us at Mockcat and do check out our free Telegram channel, our free daily quizzes, and you can also sign up at Mockcat to prepare for CAT 2023. All the best.